All right, so today we have to talk about Apple again. All right, so uh, I'm going to be going through with the Jeff Portfolio Dive. Uh, you know, my last episode for my Jeff Portfolio Dive was a Palantir, which kind of worked out pretty well. I think that it's one of my uh, more viewed videos as well. I'm very, very happy that it seems that you guys kind of enjoyed it as well. So today we have to talk about Apple. Okay, so let's talk about the Apple entire business model and how they actually earn money what I actually think about Apple, what is my cost basis on Apple, will I be buying into Apple, and what do I see Apple doing in the future. Okay, so let's start with the business model. For people who don't already know what Apple will do, I'm sorry, you guys are living under the rock. I don't know, okay? But anyway, let's give you guys the breakdown. Okay, let's start with products, okay? Oh, your iPhone and such, okay? Your iPhone, your iPads, okay? Your MacBook, your AirPods, all these are so-called the products that Apple has been selling and this have been going up and up and up. Of course, I would also have to add in the fact that Apple is actually going to be going down on production for iPhones by 3 million um, produced in this year. But of course, more on that later or even in another video. All right, next up, we have to talk about how they earn money via subscription. Okay, that's your iCloud. Personally, myself, I am subscribed to a 2 terabyte iCloud because I just back up all my stuff into iCloud. I don't care. All my phone data, all my pictures, all my videos, all my thumbnails, all of them are inside my iCloud. I don't care. 2 terabyte. Um, I'm not really bridging past that 2 terabyte just yet, but if it needs to be, I will be upgrading because it's so useful for me. All right, and next up, we have to talk about your Apple TV, your Apple Arcade, your iTunes. All of these are basically um, the subscription model and your Apple Music as well, okay? Uh, next, we have app developers. So that's where they also earn money, which is people who are developing apps, programmers, uh, musicians, uh, people who want to sell their apps, people who want to sell their music, people who want to do microtransaction in those apps, okay? Those, uh, of, uh, all those microtransaction. Apple takes a big cut, up to 30% for some of them. Okay, so next up, we have to talk about something huge that's going to be happening for Apple, which is advertising. Okay, if you're not aware of what happened two quarters ago, when Apple actually did a privacy change throughout the entire um, advertising, uh, advertising business for Apple products in general, it means that people who want to target their ads are unable to do so because they want to give you more privacy on all your Apple products. Okay, so how does that actually work? By giving you privacy, it means that advertisers who wants to target an ad to you, it's going to be very, very hard because you can just say, no, I don't want to see this ad. Done. Okay, and that's going to be a huge issue, which is why you saw Snapchat, you saw uh, Twitter, you saw Meta Platform, you saw Pinterest, all of them who are in the social media platforms, hash slash, uh, advertising business, all of them kind of just went nuts because that's where all the profits are actually supposed to be at. And all those, poof, gone. Okay? But of course, Apple is not all that dumb to just destroy a ship for no reason. They are destroying that ship because they want to rebuild one under their own flagship. Okay? So I do think that advertising uh, is going to be a very, very prominent figure in the next upcoming few years for Apple uh, for this entire business model. All right, next up, we have to talk about companies we have to look at uh, in terms of your rivalry, your partners, or yada, 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 okay? We have to talk about suppliers, okay? Suppliers for your hardware, okay? We have to talk about Wistron for all the circuit boards, Pegatron for your assembly, uh, Qualcomm for the pro processors, the receivers, the transceivers, uh, Intel for all the processing chips and whatnot, and many, many more, okay? And of course, with supplier for hardware, we have to talk about supplier for software, Okay, which is your Google, your cloud service pro, uh, pro providers, which is your Google and your Amazon web service. Okay, so all these are for the subscription side things for the software. And then of course, at the same time, we also have to talk about how um, all this company would also take into motion of what would happen when something happened in the production supply line. Okay, which is why today we are talking about how Apple is basically going down in 3 million iPhones produced for the year, which is a lot lesser than what we expected, okay? And which is why Apple is currently being hit in terms of the pricing, okay? I know that is pretty bad, um, a pretty bad look for Apple, but ultimately, I do feel that nothing really changed with Apple. 
So I'll talk more about that uh, in a little bit. Okay, so let's talk about price point first. Okay, because after all, we are a financial channel. I don't want to just talk about Apple yada yada things that you probably already know. Okay, let's talk about price point. Okay, so across the three trading platforms right now that I do have that I'm actively using, okay, my average price for Apple at the moment is around $113. One one three dollars. It was slightly higher. It was about a hundred and I think a hundred and thirty dollars. I think uh, because at one hundred and thirty six, I actually bought in a lot more Apple. Uh, but then I did sell off um, the ones that I actually bought uh, at one five six last week uh, when they actually after they announced the earnings. I thought that Apple was actually in a very very good position, so I did sell off a, a, a small chunk of uh, my Apple shares. Uh, because I'm kind of reallocating my uh, my money at the moment, uh, but I do want to say that what I actually did back then, why the reason why I even sold to begin with was because I saw so many um, difficult earnings that actually went by, and that was one of the big reasons why I actually sold off some of my Apple. I did not even sell off everything. I basically just sold off what I bought um, about like two to three weeks prior uh, at about hundred and thirty six. I bought it at hundred and thirty six. I sold at one hundred and fifty six. Just making some small gains there. Uh, of course, with the money that I actually do have, I'm thinking about reallocating it into other shares or even reallocating it into cash. So right now, I'm just putting in offers into the market, trying to buy certain companies at certain price point. So of course, if those fail to enter into a position to transact in those companies, then maybe I'll just hold into cash. Maybe I'll buy more Apple again. Okay, but I'll see how that actually goes. So next up, we have to talk about valuation and where this company would actually go. But before we actually get to the valuation and where the company would go, I need to put this in first, which is Weibo. Okay, Weibo is sponsoring this video today. And I'm very, very happy to tell you guys that Weibo is giving you guys literally just $150 straight to your face. You're getting $150 straight. Okay, for Singapore users that are watching this video right now, the best promotion is here. Okay, they're gonna give you a hundred fifty dollars cash voucher. Okay, you can you can take the money, you can spend it, you you can buy shares, you can buy options if you are so you know whatever you want to do with it. Okay, or you can literally just get the cash and just withdraw it into your bank account. It's that simple. Okay, but all you have to do is just deposit two thousand dollars into your account, make one buy trade on any shares or any ETF of United States shares and ETF and also one option okay so if you're unaware of how you can do all this thing okay just drop me a DM on my Instagram I'm pretty sure you guys already know my Instagram is at on Hauser just DM me if you're unaware of how to actually go about doing it I'll help you get your $150 no problem okay so anyway use Weibo today okay I'm, I'm such a big fan of Weibo like even right now over here you can see that I'm using Weibo right here okay a Weibo is here every single day I'm a big fan of the platform and I'm happy that they are sponsoring this video. Now, let's get back to the valuation and, and uh, where this company will go for Apple. All right, so let's talk about valuation. I believe that a lot of people uh, usually talk about how Apple have a pretty good standing. Apple is a very solid company, a blue chips company, a company that would most likely not fall uh, because if it does fall, it is a devastation for a lot of different other companies as well. And I personally, I do believe so as well. So in terms of valuation wise, let's talk about short term in terms of like just one year or so. By the end of 2023, I do believe that a 200 to $220 valuation for Apple is pretty fair. Okay, 200 to 220 is a number that I, I would buy at, buy in at for 2023. Of course, Certainly, I do need to talk about how this is how the market is kind of moving at the moment, especially in the past two years. The market has been shifting so quickly that we cannot really just give out long-term uh, prediction because a recession is going to hit any time right now. The FOMC is not going to be bailing out anyone, anyone anyway. Okay, Money printing is not really happening. The dollar is high and that is going to be affecting uh, Apple as well because when the dollar is high, every other currency is down, Apple is still going to get a huge brunt of the hurt. But of course, I think right now, in terms of rivalry wise, I think that no one is actually super duper close to Apple for what they have done so far. It's fair that you can say that maybe Samsung is quite close, maybe you can say HP, maybe you can say Dell, whatever of all those technological companies, sure it is a possibility that they might be close. 
But in terms of market share at the moment, I do believe that it is equally distributed uh, where Apple is taking up a huge market share and the rest is most likely going to be with Samsung. Okay, so with these two companies dual pol uh, monopolized, dual polized, duopolized, I guess, duopolis, the whole entire um, products industry. Okay, we're talking about phones, we're talking about tablets, we're talking about computers, we're talking about laptops. Okay, all these are basically done by these two companies. So I think that in terms of market share wise, it's not exactly diluting as of now. Okay. However, I do understand that a lot of people will say, oh, you know, Apple is not exactly innovating at the moment. The iPhone 13 is the same as iPhone 14. There's not much difference. They are not doing much to change. They're not doing something to really shake up the entire industry. Uh, but of course, I do believe that that's an issue that's happening across the board. Okay, it's not just an Apple thing. No one is actually coming out to say that, oh, you know, I have this revolutionary idea that's going to be destroying the entire industry. We are going to change how phone works. We're going to change how laptop works. We're going to change how tablet works. No one is exactly doing that level of innovation anymore. Okay, right now, the only sort of innovation that you can do is kind of on software-wise, which is why they are doing like the dynamic island and certain things like that for the iPhone. Okay, of course, the level of innovation from when we first had the first iPhone, as compared to the difference between iPhone 13 jump to iPhone 14, the difference is too huge and staggering for us to even make a comparison. But I do think, like I said, I do think that uh, the whole entire innovation issue is something that is across the board. Okay, I don't think this is an Apple issue. And because of that, I think that, uh, likewise, again, market share is not diluting. All right, so, but if we talk about long-term wise, like I said before, I think market movement is going to be a huge um, issue on how we actually see um, companies uh, going. Because when market that move in this sort of manner, I think that, you know, we have to see how market share actually dilute as well. Because I don't think that is a possibility for Apple to be there forever. I don't think Apple is going to be there for 200 years uh, because, of course, in this period of time, people are going to um, innovate a lot more. There are going to be newer talents that come in. There are people who are going to be entrepreneurs who are going to be creating even better products, even better softwares. Uh, but I feel that, you know, for a long time as of now, for in the long time, uh, long term wise, at the moment, I have very, very little doubt in Apple, okay, which is why personally, I, I don't mind putting money into Apple, okay? Apple is not this hyper-growth company. It's not anymore as it is back in like maybe uh, 20, oh, I don't know, like 2010, 2011. Apple was like in this huge growth, um, this huge growth hack. Right now, it's not exactly that. Right now, it's just basically this tech company that's doing very, very well. Market share is pretty good. A very dense uh, manner of how you can actually make money. So everything across the board looks very, very nice. And honestly, you know, if all else fail, okay, even Warren Buffett himself is also still looking to expand his position in Apple. And I, if that doesn't say enough, you know, nothing I actually am saying right now would actually mean anything to you guys. But anyway, that's all I have for this uh, um, portfolio dive. Uh, I hope you guys enjoy this sort of content. And of course, please subscribe to my channel. I'm trying to get to 100 subscribers by the end of the year. And also drop a like down below. And of course, remember to use my link down below. Anyway, that's all I have for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.